from the year 1911 in the Pittsburgh Press. And there were mostly just a lot of uh, individual scores that won't mean a whole lot to the average listener of today. But we'll skip to the meat of the article. Jay Pierce of this city, rolling on the Davis alleys Friday afternoon, established an enviable score for Pittsburgh duck pens. With a five and a half inch ball weighing four and a quarter pounds against the new dandy pen, marked up a score of 198. All in all, five spares and five strikes were recorded, having only the bad frame the ninth when only eight pins fell. The following argument has been advanced by William J. Shad, manager of the Davis Alleys. The old five inch, three and a quarter pound ball was a good standard size for the average bowler, but this season, when the popular dandy pin became the fashion, a few of the bowlers advanced arguments in favor of a larger and heavier ball, five and a half inch, weighing four and a half pounds. This great increase will really become a farce due to the inability of the majority of rollers to handle the one, to handle one successfully. The duck bin game should be kept within a certain sphere, but the new ball bids to put the game beyond all limitations. And I will add my own commentary on this one. The recent book that I wrote about uh, the history of bowling has a section about this new dandy pin, and that was basically the first rubber band pin that was introduced, and it was introduced in the uh, city of Baltimore, actually. But uh, Pittsburgh adopted that that uh, rubber banded pin. It seems like from that point on, the uh, rubber band pin was the staple of Pittsburgh duck pins. So maybe they figured that the uh, larger ball and heavier ball would uh, topple the banded duck pins a little better than the five inch ball that was three and a half pounds.